Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 28 through 45. Hear the word of the Lord. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been there dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you? that if you believed, you would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be holy and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This week, I've been thinking about the phrase, if only this were to happen, things could get better. I think I started thinking about this when I was sick a few weeks ago, and then I started to be a bit afraid of what my cold could be. I started to think, if only my cold would go away, I won't be afraid, and I could feel better. I think many of us are thinking the same as we look at our world. I keep thinking, I really hope we flatten the curve because I don't want people getting sick. People I care about, congregants that I know, if only the coronavirus would stop spreading, life will be better. It's true though, isn't it? We think to ourselves, if this one thing would be fixed, it would all be better. In our gospel reading this morning, I see the disciples think a similar thought. 
Here is Martha and Mary who send a message to Jesus that Lazarus is ill. They take precautions. And of course, they're thinking to themselves, if Jesus can heal a blind man, surely he can heal our brother. If Jesus shows up, Lazarus will get better. And they try to take precautions. For if Jesus shows up, he'll be healed. And death can come another day. Yet when Jesus waits two days to go to Judea, he clarifies to the disciples that Lazarus has passed away. So it's normal. It's normal to hear Martha's response. When Jesus shows up, Martha tells him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Essentially, she's telling Jesus, Lord, if you were here when he was ill, he would have been healed and he wouldn't be dead right now. I think of these moments in our passage and how this idea, this thinking appears. If X happens, it will be better. If the fear of my cold was gone, things will be better. If the virus was gone, things will be better. If Jesus was there when Lazarus was sick, things would be better. Yet we all know that even after our colds are healed, we will one day get a cold again. Even if Jesus is to heal Lazarus, and we know, spoiler alert, eventually Lazarus is resurrected. Yet Lazarus still one day dies again. It's such a frustrating thing. We see these problems that face us and we think if X were solved, everything would be better. But we know it isn't true. Getting rid of one problem doesn't mean the whole situation is better. I heard over the weekend a podcast called The Liturgist Podcast that said something that I believe captures what I'm trying to say. Michael Gunger and Peter Rollins in the episode, are those people the problem? Talk about scapegoating. And halfway in, they begin to talk about problems and that in theory, if the problem is solved, it would make the situation better. They begin talking about racism, sexism, and so on. And then Peter Rollins says, quote, Many of these problems are not problems, but are solutions to the problem. Just like alcoholism is not the problem, it is a solution to the problem. If you are working with someone who is an alcoholic, and you don't work out what the alcohol is the solution to, and if you think that if you get rid of the alcoholism through sheer will, it will come up in a different way. If you think that homelessness is the problem and we can just get rid of it, we are not realizing that no, it's the solution to a problem that exists within society. When we go to the poor and the homeless, it's not that we are good news to them. They are good news to us because they are the truth that we cannot see as a society, the unconscious truth that we are not embracing. There's something about the way we are living." End quote. That's why the phrase, if X is solved, everything will be better, is actually unmasked. What we think is the problem is not the problem, but actually the solution to the actual problem. It unmasks that the problem we think we are seeing is actually the solution to a bigger problem. And it's a bigger problem we tend to want to avoid. Because again, if my cold goes away, it doesn't mean I won't get sick again. The anxiety we feel in social distancing isn't a problem, but indeed it shows that this feeling we have, this anxiety, is the solution to the problem that we as humans desire connection. 
We forget that when we have a fever, it's not the problem, but the solution to the problem. A fever is a solution of the body fighting the virus in us. We miss the actual problem. And look at Martha as she looks at Jesus and says, If only you were here, Lazarus would have been healed and would not have died. With Lazarus, his illness that leads to death is not the problem. It's the solution. It's the solution to the problem that death will one day claim all of us. Death is the solution to the problem that we aren't gods. We aren't eternal. For the wages of sin is death, Paul says. And Jesus, and Jesus doesn't miss the actual problem. When Jesus tells Martha the solution he has to this problem, she misses the solution that Christ is declaring. The solution to the actual big problem. When he tells Martha, Lazarus will rise again, she answers, I believe in the resurrection on the last day. She believes the solution will come in a day to come. Yet Jesus tells her, I am the resurrection and the life, and this has an impact today. Yet again, they tell Jesus when they take him to where Lazarus is laying, if only you were here, this problem wouldn't have happened. Lazarus wouldn't have died. They are determined in what they see as the problem and what they see as the solution. Yet Jesus breaks apart how this problem is being articulated, contained and framed. This is why I think when Jesus arrives and sees Martha, and Mary sobbing, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. Jesus begins to weep. Jesus sees the big picture, the actual problem, that death arrives and that death has come to someone he loves. And so Jesus breaks apart how this problem is being articulated and framed. Dying is a solution to the problem that sin has a hold on this world. And then Jesus, and then Jesus presents a new solution to this problem. He will take on death, death on the cross. And even when death comes to Jesus, it cannot hold him. It cannot prevail. It cannot conquer. Jesus conquers death, is resurrected, and now the solution is true. Jesus is the life and the resurrection. And here is our first glimpse of it. For Lazarus comes from the grave, not in the day to come, but today. And Jesus tells his disciples, unbind him, let him go. I want to make sure we aren't missing this new solution that we hear this morning. When Christ says, I am the life and the resurrection, when Jesus reframes the whole problem and says, I am the solution, we need to be mindful not to miss it. For even though the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus declares life, and not just for the day to come, but today. I think this is where we sometimes miss it. Because when we think of the problems we face, we may think that the solution will be the day to come. But no, it's not just the resurrection for the day to come, but today. For this changes everything. This changes the way we think of it. If only X were to happen, things will be better. Because when we ask, will home insecurity exist in the kingdom come? The answer in Jesus rephrases this question by asking the bigger questions that we sometimes miss. The question now is, will the kingdom come be shaped in a way that some people are left out? Of course not. And because the kingdom come declares a new solution to the actual problem, it's not held to just the day to come, but to be lived out today, to be pursued today. Instead of thinking if X were to happen, things will be better, 
We can now say because Jesus is the life and the resurrection, things are being reconciled. And this calls us and challenges us to live into this truth, to live into this resurrection today. For we are told to unbind and let go of all those who live under the problem of death. To be a people that bring the kingdom to God, to kingdom today. To be a resurrection people. Not just of the day to come, but of today. The solution to the actual problem is here. And it's calling us to live into the solution. And we do this. When we love mercy and do kindness and fight for justice. We proclaim to the world that because in the resurrection, families are together. This means we will fight for this today. We proclaim to the world that in the kingdom come, the climate is reconciled. And so this will be fought for today. We proclaim to the world that in the kingdom come, people are healed. And so we pursue this today. And we pursue flattening the curve and praying for our medical professionals. We will get through this season together, stronger together, holding each other in prayer. For Christ is with us, proclaiming life in the day to come after this COVID season and proclaiming life today. For Lazarus was not resurrected in the day to come. Lazarus was resurrected that day. We not only point to the day to come, but we also bring it here today through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, give us the strength to do so. Amen.